This patient has benign essential blepharospasm. Normal individuals blink about once every two to three seconds. Note this patient's increased blink rate as well as occasional brief eyelid spasms. Also note that he is attempting to keep his eyes open by elevating his forehead muscles. This patient has more severe blepharospasm. She not only has an increased blink rate, but also has more sustained spasms of the eyelids that result in her eyes being closed for several seconds at a time. This patient's blepharospasm takes the form of intermittent sustained spasms without an increase in the blink rate. Thus, at times, her eyes appear to blink normally, whereas at other times, she has sustained eyelid closure. Note that she has some brow spasm as well as some mild involuntary movements of her mid and lower face, particularly around the mouth, consistent with early Mej syndrome. This patient has more severe blepharospasm associated with Mej syndrome. She has an increased blink rate, frequent sustained spasms of the eyelids and brows, and significant involuntary movements of the mid and lower face. This patient has Mej syndrome characterized by fairly mild eyelid spasms, but more severe mid and lower facial spasms, particularly around the mouth. This patient has very severe Mej syndrome. Her eyelid spasms are so severe that she sometimes must manually elevate her eyelids in order to see, and her involuntary facial movements involve the entire face. In contrast to the previous patients, this patient has a condition called atypical blepharospasm, or apraxia of eyelid opening. This condition occurs primarily in patients with Parkinson's disease and in patients with a degenerative disorder similar to Parkinson's disease called progressive supranuclear palsy. Note that this patient does not have an increased blink rate, but rather a reduced blink rate. Most of the time, his eyes are wide open. In addition, when his eyes do close involuntarily, the closure is only partly a spasm and partly a very sustained closure that may last for five to 10 seconds or more. Sometimes the patient can almost immediately open his eyes. At other times, the eyes remain closed despite his efforts to open them. Most patients with atypical blepharospasm have certain tricks that they can do to get their eyes open. This patient's eyes open when he touches the corner of the right eyelid. In general, patients with apraxia of eyelid opening do not respond nearly as well to Botox injections as do patients with simple benign essential blepharospasm or Mej syndrome. This patient also has apraxia of eyelid opening. Like the first patient, his eyes are open most of the time. When they close, the closure is more gentle, with very little associated spasm. Like the first patient, he has a trick to get his eyes open. He covers them both with the palms of his hands. When he takes his hands away, the eyes are open. Because this patient has very little true spasm of his eyelids, he probably would not benefit or would benefit very little from Botox injections.